Today we're checking out the new Galaxy A35 5G. Some of the specs on this one, you've got a 6.6 .6 inch Super AMOLED display, 1080 by 2340 resolution, up to 120 hertz refresh rate, and Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. The one I have here is eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. I believe there's also a 256 gigabyte version. Comes with an Exynos 1380 processor. You can also expand the storage with a micro SD card as well. It's also IP67 dust and water resistant. It also has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. To me, it's a little confusing just how close this phone is to the Galaxy A55 5G. But I know Samsung wants a phone for pretty much every category. You have your micro SD card or SIM card removal tool. Of course, you have your quick start guide, safety and warranty information. They do still include a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Wow, this is super shiny here on the back. The color shown here is called lemon. I believe it comes in violet, navy, and ice blue as well. This one also has that bump on the side for the power and volume buttons where it's rounded and then it's flat everywhere else around the edges. It has a nice matte finish around the edges, micro SD card and SIM card tray there on the top, speaker and USB-C charging port there on the bottom. You've got a triple camera set up there on the back. It's got a 50 megapixel wide angle main lens, eight megapixel ultra wide and five megapixel macro lens. It also has a 13 megapixel front facing camera and you can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second on both the front and back for video recording. Build quality feels really nice on this. Very similar to the Galaxy A55 5G. Looks almost identical in size and shape to the A55. Kind of makes me wonder if you could use the same case for both phones. Really the only thing that's slightly different is the speaker placement on the bottom but I feel like if the opening is large enough it won't really matter. About 209 grams for the A35, about 211 grams for the A55. Fairly small bezels all the way around. You'll notice it's a little bit larger there in the bottom. When setting up you've got face unlock, fingerprint, pin, password, or pattern. Seems to be about the same placement as the A55. Of course you have light and dark mode. Can't say that would be my first pick as far as the wallpaper goes. I always like how Samsung does their lock screens. You can see they add a little bit of animation there. It's also wide by now one, which is gonna be good for streaming apps like Netflix. You can also watch up to 4K resolution for YouTube videos as well. This one also has motion smoothness uh, where you can switch between adaptive or standard depending on if you want 60 Hertz versus 120. If you're wanting better battery life, you might wanna try standard, but of course it's going to be smoother on adaptive. Left of the home screen you've got Google Discover or Samsung Free. It's currently on Android 14, One UI 6.1. It's using about 16% of the 128 gigabyte storage. I think it's still doing updates though, so it could use a little bit more. It's got most of your typical apps from Samsung, a handful from Google, and a few from Microsoft. They also throw in Facebook, Spotify, Netflix. It also has the new notification shade and shortcuts with most of your typical stuff like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sound, auto rotate, airplane mode, flashlight, mobile data, mobile hotspot, power saving, location, link to windows, screen recorder, quick share, do not disturb, scan QR code, modes, multi-control, your screen brightness, eye comfort shield, dark mode, smart view, device control. You can also customize it quite a bit or add even more shortcuts like extra dim, take screenshot, NFC, battery protection, kids, secure folder, and Dolby Atmos. You've also got the edge panel over here on the side where you can customize it by adding just about any app or you can even add people, smart select, tasks, weather, tools, reminder, and clipboard. Performance wise, you can see the Geekbench scores are a little less on single and multi-core scores than the new A55. Interesting that the GPU score is about the same as the older Galaxy A54. Gaming with this phone is also pretty close to the A55 when testing PUBG Mobile and Asphalt 9. I left it on the default settings this time for PUBG Mobile since the A55 seemed to have glitches when it came to water using the ultra graphic settings, but overall it seemed to play fairly smooth on both games. I also ran my typical battery drain test and it lasted about 13 hours, so fairly similar to the Galaxy A55 5G. 
just a little less, but it should have plenty of power to last a couple days with mixed usage, especially if you turn the screen brightness down. The nice thing is I can use my Razer controller while gaming. Nothing seems to really get in the way, unlike some of the Pixel phones that have that camera bar going across there. I feel like the speakers on this might be a little quieter than the Galaxy A55, but it's fairly close. Here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what it sounds like. Inside the camera app, this one has something called fun, where you can add stuff to people's face, add filters, that kind of stuff. You've also got portrait, photo, video. Under more, you have pro, pro video, night, food, panorama, macro, super slow-mo, slow motion, hyperlapse, single take. You also have Bixby Vision and AR Zone. You can record up to 4K 30 frames per second for video recording. The shutter speed on here feels pretty quick. Here's a few samples of photo and video just to give you an idea of what to expect. Photo and video quality are actually pretty good on here, and it's pretty close to the Galaxy A55. In fact, there's several things that are so close to the A55, I'll need to do a detailed comparison to see if it's worth choosing the A55 over this. But if you like phones, tablets, and other tech, I've got a lot more stuff that I'm working on, so you'll want to keep an eye out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.